اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بار الخلاء اجمعین الصلاۃ والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وخاتم النبیین و حبیب اللہ العالمین ابلقاسم المصطفیٰ محمد و اہل بیت طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین ولانۃ اللہ علیہ آدائہم اجمعین من العن الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I'd like to request for Surah Mubarakah Ya Fatiha, for the Isale Sawab of Marhumin of the sponsors of tonight's iftar, inshallah, especially parents of Brother Nazir Chilwan and Sister Khatija as well as their Marhum son and also for our dear Marhum brother Ramiz. May Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them place in service of محمد آل محمد علیہ مسلط وسلام بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین یا کا نعبد و یا کا نستعین اہدنا صراط المستقیم صراط الدین نعمت علیہم غیر المغلوب علیہم ولوالین صلوات علی محمد و آل محمد In our discussion in the shadow and light of سورہ مبارکہ یہ کہف For last few nights we are discussing one central theme basically in these verses and that is our relationship with this dunya, with this world in which we live. First portion where which started was bir nafsak. O Prophet, you must have patience. And Sabr was discussing about how to treat people who have better situation in this dunya. People with wealth, people with status, people with position. And in this discussion, we of course discuss the point that those people who are behind and crazily in love of this dunya, they are away from Allah and their hearts are oblivious and negligent of zikrullah. Waqana amruhu furata and they are on extremes in the sense of their greed for this dunya. Then yesterday, we have, alhamdulillah, relatively longer discussion where Surah Mubarakah Kahf analyzes, you know, these Ahlul Dunya and their psychology and their 
different stages. And again, Quran says, Wazrib and O Prophet, give them example of two people. One was very rich, full of resources, and another one was with less resources or poor. Huh? And there, long discussions, if you remember, how these people who are stuck in this dunya and in love of this dunya, Allah Akbar, I explained according to these verses of Quran, go through four different stages. And destroy themselves and how problematic they are. So these two parts basically, okay, a lot of discussions last night, I don't want to repeat. We in fact discuss at least four or five important lessons from that example of Rajulain, Quran gave, Surah Kahf explains. But now without going into those details. You know, the picture which comes out very clearly that dunya and love of dunya is condemned, is problematic, is replaces in our heart love of Allah. We are not supposed to run behind this dunya. Temptations of this world, attractions of this world, money, status, position, even knowledge, you know, all that can fool you, can, you know, bring you down. And as I explained last night, very important, that especially people with low capacity, people with limited, you know, zarfiya accommodation in their soul, you know, when they get something like that, they very quickly all for that. They very quickly are trapped. A huh? hmm. simple example, you know, if somebody never had money, for whole life he was, for example, difficult situation and poor. All of a sudden he gets a big amount of money. What he does? Oh, he goes mad. Bragging about all those things, four conditions we explain, you know. He brags. Sometimes he shows off even much more than those who got money or those who have much more money than him. That's how he acts, that's how he shows. He wants to prove to the people that I got something. That is a status of people with low capacity, fooled by dunya, fooled by money and wealth. Here now, Quran moves, verse number 45, to another important and interesting discussion. So, dunya, temptation of dunya, indulging in dunya, going crazy and love of this dunya, all is bad, all is problematic, from the different angles as explained. But here, in these two verses, which we, inshallah, will be discussing tonight, Quran summarizes. Quran gives a complete picture and tries to also, you know, reply to some possible confusions or questions in our mind or minds of the people. Let us read these two verses, inshallah, and translate, and then we will discuss. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, verse number 45. Lahum. مَسَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَتَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْزِ فَأَسْبَحَ حَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْرِّيَاحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُقْتَدِرًا and O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam propound to them, proclaim to them the example, the parable of this life, life of this world, life of this dunya, hayat dunya. 
it is listen uh, the translation require little bit more dikka it is like the vegetation that's how some translators have translated and i more agree with them compared to other one the straight translation is you know masal al hayat al dunya kama in example of life of this world is like a water but listen how this translator maududi has translated and i think it's better it is like the vegetation of the earth nabatul ars which flourished luxuriantly when it mingled with the water which we sent down from the sky so mushabbah be my respected scholar sheikh faleek we are very privileged tonight to have him here dr sheikh shahid mati hafizahullah salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad the example of this world is like that vegetation that grass which is very green which is very nice fresh why fakhtalata because it was mixed with the water which we send down from the sky but then the same green beautiful grass or vegetation fa asbaha hashima hashim all of a sudden fa asbaha overnight it turned into hashim hashim means stubble or you know that hay that brown thing when you do the harvesting of the crop what is left underneath a small portion which is brown which is very light very light normally they keep it for the feeding of the animals and so on that hay that you know that brown remaining part of the plant hashim a very light it is it's very light and very dry it will turn that same grass that same green vegetation fa asbaha hashiman tazruhu riyah a stubble which the winds blow about وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا الله alone has the power over all the things verse number 46 almal wal banun allahu akbar zinatul hayat al dunya wal baqiyat al salihat khairun inda rabbika thawaban wa khairun amala and indeed mal money wealth albanun children are adornment are an adornment are the beauty are the decoration of the life of this world wal baqiyat us salihat but the lasting good deeds are the best from what angle from the in the eyes of allah of course in the rabbik in the sight of your lord sawaban from the reward point of view wa khairun amala and from the hope and from the future from the long lasting future point of view this verse really explains this whole philosophy in this short you know few words ha huh? salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad once again salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad now let me draw some very important lessons as i said tafsir part or more explanation in the light of these two verses as i said that these two verses are basically summary basically you know conclusion of the whole discussion about our dunya our relationship with this world with 
temptation of this world like money, women, status, I don't know, popularity, position, power, whatever you want to call it. These two verses very beautifully. First of all, Wazriblahum Masalan. O Prophet explained to them to understand nature of this world. You are running behind. You must understand nature of this world. It's very glamorous, no doubt. Nabat. Very green. It's very lush green, very beautiful. Very tempting, very attracting. No doubt about it. Glamorous. But don't forget that this very beautiful, tempting, green, attractive position, status of the world is at the same time extremely unstable, unreliable. Therefore, so beautifully, Quran gives example. Example of life of this world is example of vegetation. Vegetation which becomes green, rain comes, desert turns into a lush green valley. So beautiful, so nice, so cooling to the eyes, full of fruits, full of produces and so on and so on. And all of a sudden, autumn arrives. And then all this thing, you know, falls. Leaves, for example, when they are green, how they firmly attach to the tree. And autumn comes, the same leaves turn, you know, yellow and brown gradually. And any wind which hits them, they fall apart. The exact Example, in fact, is not about leaves. It's more about like bushes, like, you know, those greenery which grows from the land. And once it becomes dry, it falls, as I said, stubble, as Quran says. And then, naturally, any wind comes, it blows it. Tazruhu riyah. Tazruhu riyah. Hashiman, stubble, remaining of hay and brown Light, light stuff. This is according to Quran, reality of this dunya. You understand? So all the things which we say, don't run behind dunya. Don't treat people of dunya extraordinary. Don't give them special treatment. Don't think that wealth is a criteria. All those discussions which passed last two, three nights, Quran is explaining. You know why? Because dunya is a glamour but extremely unstable, extremely unreliable. Indirectly, so beautifully, Quran draws our attention to the situation in our own life. Baba, why you go very far? All of you, more and less, living in this world 60, 70, 80, 90 years, at least 70, 80 years, you have experienced with your own eyes Tree is green one day, with leaves, very firm and very strong. Autumn comes and falls apart and it's nothing. Don't you see this phenomena every year repeating in front of you? Sometimes it is natural, means it takes its natural uh, lifetime. Sometimes like in Surah Mubarakaye, Yunus, verse number 24, Quran, in fact, speaks exactly similar example, but there does not speak about whole life, but says that sometimes this greenery, this glamour, this, you know, attractive status and situation, in a second, a fraction of a second disappear. Crop is standing ready, very nice. Lightning happening, lightning happens, it burns down. Farmer comes in the morning, and he sees nothing, 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 gone, gone. Like in Surah Mubarak, you know, so I don't want to now take you. In Nama Mathalul Hayat al Dunya Kama in Anzal Nahum in Asrama, Fakhtala Tabahi Nabatul Arze, Mimma Yakulun Naswal Anam Hatta is Akhazatul Arzu Zukhrafaha. 
وأزينت وزن أهلها إنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حسيدا كأن لم تغني بالأمس أوه 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 long verse but says that you know the same vegetation which is mixed with the water which we send down from result of the rain how it grows how it flourishes how it becomes so powerful nice beautiful people enjoy animals eat we provide food it gives a beautiful beauty things to the earth and the society environment everything and the people think they are powerful now they got something ataha amrona laylan aw nahara all of a sudden our amar our matter comes to them night or day burns them down like lam taghna bil ams like kaanna lam taghna like they were did not exist like yesterday finish gone so sometimes so sudden you have seen yourself experienced earthquake comes flood comes lightning happening i don't know what disappear sometimes even if it takes his whole natural life is still end of the day disappears this is reality of this life salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad now the verse number 46 al malu wal banun zinatul hayat ad dunya mal wealth banun children are an ornament of the life of this world okay first of all quran says mal wal banun wealth and children you know why because these are the two main items human resources financial resources mal financial resources banun children referring to human resources in this world you got these two resources zinato hayat ad dunya they are ornament of this world of this life okay here in light of this verse brothers and sisters tonight i would like to draw your attention to a very important discussion as a summary as a final outcome of our discussion over last three nights regarding our relationship with dunya okay so dunya is bad dunya is evil ha huh? this this world in which we live it is evil that's what we are saying is that what quran is saying lot of people indeed think like that lot of people has this type of approach that if you want to achieve anything you need to divorce this world you need to shun this dunya and temptation of dunya wealth money luxury ease comfort fun whatever reject it and then only you will be able to get anywhere this is one understanding of dunya but quranic understanding islamic understanding is not like that no dunya itself cannot be evil my brother please listen carefully what i am saying why what is dunya this world which we is around us money mountains oceans i don't know food luxury oh everything who created this dunya who created this world allah created this world we believe in tauhid means one god we don't believe in two god god of good and god of bad so if allah created and there's only one creator how it is possible to even think that allah almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala has created something which is evil not possible it's in contradiction with our basic basic aqida and ideology and faith lam yasdur minhu illa khaira nothing comes out from him except good allah 
cannot create anything but khair, but good. So if you are saying this dunya is bad, everything in this world is bad and evil by its nature, then what about Allah's creation? So of course, that is, you know, not possible to accept. No, no, this is Allah's creation. Allah created it. How it can be evil? Never. Therefore, some people go on a different level and they say, no, 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 no. This dunya is not evil. This world is not evil. Allah created it. It's good. It's khair. It's good. What is bad is our love for this dunya is bad. Hubbu dunya rasukullu khatiya. Love of dunya is source of all the mistakes. Love of this dunya is problematic. Shaheed Ayatullah Mutahari Rizwanullah Alayh beautifully explains that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator almighty, did not create only objects, did not create mountains and oceans and you know, valleys and greenery and food and women and men and all that. No, 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 no. Even the emotions and the feelings and the nature which we have inside ourselves, it's also creation of Allah. Hmm? It's also creation of Allah. So, Love of dunya, if you say, love of this world, if you say it is evil, we will have a problem. Why? Because love of dunya is natural. Honestly talking, all of you, mashallah, sitting here, if I ask you a question, an honest answer, any one of you is here who does not like money? Everyone loves money. Who doesn't love money? Everyone loves status, position, power, name, fame. Huh? Who doesn't? It's there. It is part of us. So the way Allah has created us, the way Allah has created this beautiful world, Allah has also created this Nature inside ourselves. Okay, leave it. Love of money, leave it one side. What about love of mother for her child? Huh? That's also dunya. Just now Quran says, Al-Malo wal zinatul hayat dunya. Children are part of dunya. Love of children is love of dunya. Love of children is love of this dunya, this world. Right? So what about love of mother for her child or her children? Is it natural or not? It is natural. It is part of the nature. Nobody comes and teaches a mother that you should love your child. It's there. It's part of her. And not only part of her. Let me say to you further. Philosophers go further. They say that this relationships, this Love and our attachment and our connection to this dunya is base and foundation of this system in this world. If this attraction, this attachments will not be there, it will collapse. For example, very common, common manifestation of love of dunya is love of men toward women. Allahu Akbar, Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, if there is no attraction, if there is no love between men and women, how, how it is possible this world to survive, this system to survive? How reproduction, how, you know, If mother does not love her child, she will never be able to, uh, she will never be ready to take the burden of a baby for nine months. And after nine months, wahnan ala wahnan, sleepless nights. And I don't know what, 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 what. This is there. 
it's natural and this system works on based upon on these relationship if this love of parents not there if love of husband and wife not there if love of brother sister not this society this world cannot and leave it quran itself almighty allah himself regards this love as one of the signs of allah surah mubarak ye room bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wa min ayatihi ha an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwaja litaskunu ilaiha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma inna fi zalika la ayatin liqaumin yatafakkarun surah mubarak ar rum verse number 21 almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what it is from the signs of allah that he created that for you are for you mates from yourselves ha huh? and that you so that you may take comfort in them look sign of allah and then further even more clearer and explicit wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma allah is the one who placed love and affection between two of you so if man loves woman woman loves man husband loves wife wife loves husband this is what allah has placed this love and mawadda between so if it is if the, if this love is evil how that is possible so no my brother no no dunya is not evil love of this dunya is principle is also not evil you must understand logic of quran logic of quran and logic of quran is beautifully beautifully explained in this verse number 46 of surah mubarak ye kaf which we are discussing al malu wal banun zina to hayat al dunya children and wealth are ornaments of this life it means that we are not denying their role they have value they are important they are beauty of this life they are source of comfort and enjoyment and relaxation of life in this world there is nothing wrong with that there is nothing bad about it wal baqiyatu salihat what is what quran is logic of quran please understand wal baqiyatu salihat but long lasting good deeds are better than this decoration this decoration this beauty this ornament this adornment is good enjoyable but listen temporary unstable temporary temporary have it nothing wrong but always look at that with eyes of looking at temporary there is nothing long lasting wal baqiyatu salihat but long lasting good deeds khairun inda rabbika they are better by your lord from what point of view sawaban reward point of view this dunya will not give you reward because this is temporary because it is short lived it cannot give you reward what you supposed to get but good deeds have a sawab allah akbar reward you cannot even imagine wa khairu amala wa khairun amala ideal khairun amala means ideal this dunya is okay fine but this duniya cannot be ideal cannot be purpose cannot be aim now i have explained to you this is logic of quran brothers and sisters quran is not saying that you not earn good income in this duniya you must not try you must not strive for money for wealth with good education but no no all that is okay but you must always remember you are not created for this dunya this is temporary you are created for something much more higher please shahid mutahri beautifully says that quran logic is this that human being and the very existence of insan is much more valuable than being sold for this dunya salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad
he quotes he quotes Amir al-Mu'minin Imam Ali alayhi salatu wassalam and he says wala bi'sal matjar wala bi'sal matjar sheikh an tara dunya le nafsika samana the worst business the worst deal la bi'sal matjar the worst business transaction the worst deal the most losing deal is that you should look at this dunya as value for yourself as a price for yourself this dunya is not really price summon for yourself you are much more valuable so don't confine yourself to this dunya don't look at this dunya as the final goal what quran says so clearly in surah mubarakah yunus innal ladina look very clear innal ladina la yarjuna liqa'ana wa radu bil hayat ad-dunya wa tma'annu biha wal ladina hum an ayatina ghafilun ha innal ladina la yarjuna liqa those people who do not expect to meet us who are gratified with the life of the world and content with it ha issue content they are satisfied they don't want anything other than dunya they don't have another greater goal in their life than this dunya that is their final goal that is their final aim wallazina hum an ayatina ghafilun they are the one who are negligent of our signs they are the one who are in loss or for example in surah mubarak ay najm verse number 29 almighty says fa'ariz amman tawalla an dhikrina wa lam yarid illa al hayat ad dunya is away is stay away avoid those people who have avoided from our zikr who stayed away from our remembrance and who are those who stayed away from your remembrance allah's remembrance who are they lam yarid illa al hayat ad dunya they don't want anything but life of dunya so you can have life of dunya but if you have only life of dunya it's a problem if your only purpose is life of dunya is a problem but if you have life of dunya but final purpose is something much more or for example in surah mubarak ali imran very well known verse long verse zuyyana lil nas hubbu shahawat min an nisa wal banin wal qanatir wal qanatir al muqantarat min al dhahab wal fizzati wal khayl al musawwamati wal in'am wal hars zalika mata'u al hayat ad dunya za wallahu in dhus very exactly al mal wal banun zinat same message there people men are naturally tempted by the lure of women children treasures of gold and silver horses of mark cattle and plantations all this dunya these are the enjoyments in the life of this world we are not denying that they are not enjoyments they are enjoyments and you are allowed to enjoy fala tansa naseeb kama na dunya but what with allah lies a godly about to return to allahu akbar wallahu in the hu husnul maab best place to return that is something else brothers hul please understand this is the crack of the matter nobody is saying that you should not work hard in this dunya no quran is not saying don't earn don't make money don't have good life don't have good house don't have good car don't have good thing no no all that is possible nothing wrong with that but what is purpose of your life purpose of your life are not these things this is mid term this is temporary you should look for something beyond this much more better than this wal baqiyatu salihat khairun ind rabbika sawaban wa khairun amala this is islam's view quran's logic when it comes to dunya so when we condemn over and over and over and in last three nights we discuss different angles of love of dunya and we condemned it it was from this angle when in somebody's life everything is around dunya 
center is dunya purpose is dunya final destiny is dunya that is problem that is problem criteria is dunya wealth money children family tribe position status even knowledge problem one last point very important beyond the quran and islam that in this world brothers please from dunya aspect of relationship to dunya again from shahid mutahri rizwanullah alayh he says rizwanullah alayh that in this world in this human society we cannot live without akhlaq please listen carefully we need basic akhlaq if we want to live in a society we have to have basic akhlaq basic ethical moral values and he says beautifully that basic ethical values to you know follow and obey requires the sacrifice of dunya requires sacrifice of dunya love of dunya is based upon selfishness right based upon selfishness regardless of you are a believer or non believer if you are selfish you cannot have good akhlaq in a society if you are looking for your own enjoyment fun and nothing else and for you everything is this dunya then you cannot have a spirit of even sharing with other person you will not have even compassion for another person who is suffering yes if you think of reward in allah la yuziu ajr al muhsinin if you look at akhira if you look at something beyond this dunya then you will say i got 50 rand but i can share this 50 rand with somebody who have nothing but if you have love of dunya as ideal as goal as purpose of your life you will say hell to that person what difference it make i will enjoy this 50 rand myself but you give this 50 rand to him why ha huh? i'm saying a non believer when he gives something like a 50 rand which he himself can use and enjoy to somebody in need what is his motivation what is his motivation what is his drive there it comes that even human society with basic ethical akhlaq and morals cannot survive without control at least and curtailing love and hubb ud duniya and that is the meaning of that hadith which says and yesterday we had allahu akbar anniversary of the great shaheed great scholar great thinker great philosopher shaheed ayatullah muhammad baqir sadr rizwanullah alayh what a beautiful lecture he got i wish i could share the title of that lecture is hubb ud duniya raso kull khati'a love of duniya is capital of every mistake is base and foundation of every trouble and problem but in this sense in this sense which i just now explain to you i hope and i pray and i make dua that may almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq not to be prisoners of this dunya and slaves of this dunya as imam hussein said annas abidu dunya wa ad-din laiqun ala alsanatihim yahutu nahu ma dawrat ma ishuhum wa iza muhassu bil bala ma aqallat these sentences are should be written in the golden words allahu akbar when imam hussein says annas abidu dunya people are slaves of this dunya slaves of this dunya waddin laiqun ala alsanatihim and religion is like a slave in their mouth yahutu nahu ma dawrat ma ishuhum they rotate it in their mouth until their life is okay if everything is fine wa iza muhassu bil bala 
but when they are surrounded with tests, calamities, challenges, ma akallat tayyanun. Very few are those who are committed to deen, to values, to akhlaq, to sacrifice, to ethics, to morality. Allahu Akbar. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ahli baytihi tahirin. Salawat. Any question, any comment, anything?